Hi everybody, are you ready to fly to the US? Have you packed your luggage yet? I'm sure you have mixed feelings, but let me tell you, it's normal and you'll be fine. But having experienced traveling internationally not as a tourist but as someone who will work there for a while, I know what kind of information you will need to lessen the worries and stress and second guessing. I'm sure you have lots of questions as regards what to put in your luggage, what to prepare, etc. Today we'll talk about what to and what not to bring to the US with you. These are all based on my personal experiences and regrets so watch it till the end to avoid committing the same mistake and having the same regret. Of course as always I will give you some additional information to make sure that this video is all you ever need to watch regarding international traveling baggage situations. This is our outline for this video. I'm going to cover first checked baggage, second carry on or hand baggage, immigration documents for entry to the US for J1 visa holders, fourth what to bring and not to bring to the US with you, and I have some important reminders toward the end of the video so make sure to watch till the end. If you are liking my content, please subscribe to my channel and check out all the videos that I have there so far. Make sure to also like, share, and leave comments on the videos. I also have a Facebook page where you can chat with me if you have any questions or you can join me on my Facebook Live. Let's start now with checked baggage. It is a luggage in compliance with the airline baggage regulations and delivered to the airline during check-in to be stored in an inaccessible area to the passenger during the flight. Remember that once you have checked in your baggage, you cannot take it back again in case you forgot something that you should have on hand. Checked baggage is carried in the custody of the airline and stored in the cargo hold. There are certain rules to be followed for items to be carried on board and all passengers are expected to comply with these rules. Baggage not in compliance with the rules cannot be accepted on board. The ones that you are not allowed to put in your checked baggage are straightforward such as hazardous substances like explosives, anything flammable, corrosives, industrial magnets, and many other types of magnets, toxic or infectious substances, illegal drugs, firearms, etc. For all the other items, you may check out the links I have in the description below. If you have liquids that are deemed safe but are more than 100 milliliters, that's 3.4 ounces, must be checked in. Exemptions are baby formula and medications that can be brought in carry-ons. Each flight ticket has its own free baggage allowance or FBA policy. This free baggage allowance entitlement is valid only on that specific flight and may not necessarily apply to your connecting flights. In addition to the free baggage, baggage allowances might be increased through purchasing additional baggage depending on the travel class. In general, different airlines have different weight limits for check-in baggage, so make sure to check your airline's website for this one. Also, if you have connecting flights, make sure that you are clear with whether you will have your checked-in baggage at the final destination or not. You may ask the visa sponsor about the details if it's the one that booked your flight. If you're the one who's booking your flight, make sure to ask about this information too. Okay, so now let's talk about carry-on or hand carry baggage. Hand luggage or cabin baggage or carry-on luggage are the personal belongings a passenger can carry along the cabin. You may take your handbag, laptop bag, etc. into the cabin as long as they are controlled at the security checkpoints. If you wish, you could place them into the overhead lockers. Naturally, anything that you cannot have in your check baggage cannot be put in your carry-on luggage. In addition, you cannot carry liquids such as cosmetics that are more than 100 milliliters or 3.4 ounces. So make sure to have travel size cosmetics such as hand sanitizers and whatever else you need to use during your flights. As I mentioned earlier, the exemptions are medications and infant and child nourishment. So do not worry about bringing formula and snacks for your child. Of course, expect that they will be checked thoroughly. In fact, it's usually what has caused us to wait longer. Whenever we were traveling by plane, they would put all of them together in one bin and will be checked one by one. You may be asked to also open one of the cans or bottles. Sharp 
or pointed objects, blunt objects, explosives, and flammable substances, and all objects that can cause harm are prohibited on the aircraft. Items such as drills, etc. should be delivered to the airline as a checked bag. So if you have power tools that you want to bring with you, I don't know why, make sure that you have that in the checked baggage. As for the electronics such as laptops, you can put them in your carry-on for easy access. Laptops will be checked separately as well. Make sure that you do not have files that are questionable. Please pay attention to flight safety regulations to pass security checkpoints without any inconvenience while packing. All passengers are expected to comply with check-in and hand luggage regulations to have a pleasant and on-time journey. The rules on luggage dimensions and maximum weight of carry-ons may vary vary per airline, it is best to check their website. To know the specifics, like I said, some rules may vary from one airline to another. What are the documents to make accessible for immigration check for entry to the U.S.? Once your visa is approved, carry the following documents with you to the port of entry, usually the airport you land at in the U.S. Passport valid for at least six months beyond the date of your expected stay. J-1 or J-2 visa stamp. Form DS-2019. Receipt evidencing payment of the service fee, documentation of the source, and amount of your financial support. Expect to be asked how much money you have with you. It should be at least $2,500. You must enter the U.S. within the 30-day period prior to the start date indicated in Item 3 of the DS-2019. If unable to enter the U.S. before the start date, contact your sponsoring department to request a new DS-2019 and enter using the new form. Upon entry into the U.S., the officer will stamp your DS-2019 and passport and issue you an I-94 arrival departure record. If you are issued a paper I-94 card, you will be asked to write your U.S. address on it. An immigration officer may ask why you are coming to the U.S. Tell the officer you will be an exchange visitor teacher at whatever school and district stated in your DS-2019. Answer all questions honestly, completely, and politely. Remember that your entry into the U.S. is at the sole discretion of the immigration officer. Despite having your visa and all the documents, they can still deny you entry. The officer may take your fingerprints and photograph. If you do not have all required documentation, the officer cannot initially verify your information and you may be directed to an interview area referred to as secondary inspection. It is highly encouraged for you to be patient and cooperative with the immigration officers. Make sure to have your visa sponsor's contact information ready as well. If you're watching this video but you have not applied for your J-1 visa yet, you may want to watch this video later and I have lots of other videos that you might want to check out as well. If you are curious about something as regards teaching and living in the US, I might already have a video for you. Please do not forget to subscribe, hit the like and the bell buttons as well. So what not to pack in your luggage whether check-in or hand carry. Okay, so before anything else, please remember that you can stay in the US to work as a teacher on a J-1 visa for up to 5 years max. So slow down on bringing unnecessary stuff despite them having a sentimental value for you. Only pack what's necessary. If they're not necessary but you decided to have them with you later on, you can always have them sent to you or you can take them with you the next time when you go back to the US from your summer vacation in your home country. All right, let's get to it. The first one would be books. I'm referring to those heavy school books that you think you will need to study or create your lesson. For instance, I took a couple of books, physics and math, and some photocopied materials with me to the US that definitely took up space and were heavy. Then I never used them in the US because you can basically Google any information you need, including answered problem sets, worksheets, quizzes, etc. Most importantly, schools in the U.S. have e-libraries. If you are the type who likes a printed version of a book, the school will have them for sure, at least the ones that they want the students to use. If there is none, you can always request for the school to purchase it. Next would be electric appliances such as hair iron, curling iron, hair blower or dryer, or any electric appliance or tools that are not auto volt. The voltage supply in the Philippines is 220 volts and the frequency is 60 hertz, while the voltage rating for U.S. equipment for standard plug and cord equipment is 120 volts. 
unless you plan to use a voltage converter for each of these things every time you use them then you can probably take them with you but you know you can also buy them for less in the US if you are arriving in the US at the end of summer you do not need to pack heavy and bulky winter clothes you will have enough time to buy them there before you will actually need them there are lots of places where you can buy them for less just so you know fall or autumn officially starts around the third week of september winter on the other hand officially starts around the third week of december you might also have outfits that you like but do not fit you anymore yes those outfits that you have been keeping because you're hoping you'll fit in them one day but it's been two years do not pack them in your luggage anymore yep don't period if you know which state you're coming to you can google and check whether there are asian stores if there is then you may want to keep bringing filipino canned goods and noodles on a down low you can probably just bring some for a night or two just in case but you can definitely buy your food supplies right away i promise you will not miss your filipino food right away as well you will start missing it after a few months maybe there's so much food in the u.s and i am sure you will want to try them all i myself did not pack any canned goods noodles and snacks in my luggage and i was fine you want to use the space in your luggage for things that you need that might be a bit costly if you will buy them there such as clothes and shoes towels but then again make sure not to pack too much of those also, you will survive a few weeks without your hanger, so don't pack those as well. So now, what to pack? First, your carry-on must contain essential items that you would need to make it through at least one night without the rest of your luggage. Airlines occasionally lose luggage, and when this happens, they usually are not able to deliver the luggage until sometime the next day. That having been stated, you should be prepared in case an unforeseen circumstance should arise and would delay the arrival of your luggage. Here are some examples of essentials. Prescribed medications, toothpaste and toothbrush, change of clothes, snacks if you have special dietary needs. Make sure to also take with you the doctor's prescription note for the prescription medications you are packing. No need to pack bulky towels as there are towels at the hotels where you will be staying for the orientation. Next, if you are coming with your J2 dependents, make sure to also pack for carry-on the school records for you and your J2, immunization records which are required in U.S. schools, birth certificates, marriage certificates, and other important documents like property titles. Do not pack these in check-in luggage since sometimes like I said, airlines lose luggage and these documents are difficult and expensive to obtain, again, especially since you are already in the U.S. Third, items that are not bulky ones that you can use for your cross-cultural exchange activities. I have a video about this, so definitely check that out too if you want to know more. As for Philippine currency, do not bring a lot. Just bring some that you can show to students doing your cross-cultural exchange activities if that is something you want to do. Fourth, there are no uniforms for teachers and students in the public schools in the U.S. You may want to make sure that you have enough work clothes to wear. If you must know, you are not required and expected to wear business casual all the time. You might be asked to during an open house when you will be meeting the parents or guardians of your students. So, it is also important to bring some business professional attire. Also, usually the school would give shirts with a school logo that serves as work clothes you do not have to wear skirts or dress in school when i was there i was always wearing what's comfortable as long as they are decent and clean clothes fifth medicine for you and your j2 especially your children most of the medicine brands we have here in the philippines are not available there but of course since they have generic names you can be sure that although they are different brands they serve the same purpose Separate some for the carry-on luggage as I have mentioned earlier for easy access in case you need medicine such as for maintenance, headache, or diarrhea, and for the rest in your check-in baggage. Having too many medicines in your carry-on may cause delay as they will ask you why you have so many. Here are some additional reminders, so pay attention. First, PSA approved locks for your luggage are not necessary. Also, your luggage does not have to be a certain type. In fact, even boxes are okay for your stuff that you are checking in. Second, check in first before checking out the airport. Even if you feel like you have enough time, it can be really hectic at the security and lines can be very long. So make sure that you take care of checking in first before you satisfy your curiosity about what's in the airport. 
Third, read about the airport to know whether it has different sections that may need to be accessed by train or bus. Fourth, outfit. Wear something comfortable. The flight is a long one. Make sure that you have hoodie that you can access easily since it can get really cold in the airplane. Most international flights have blankets to be provided, but it's better to have your own hoodie. Fifth, for ladies, make sure that you secure sanitary pads just in case. Sanitary pads are expensive in airports and to purchase them, and some shops may not accept U.S. currency, which means you need to go find money changers before you can do any purchases at the airport. Sixth, if you do not have a phone available to make a call, go to the help desk at the airport. They will let you make an outgoing call to you as numbers. If you are curious, yes, it's okay to pack dried fish, but make sure it's in your check-in baggage. Although you can actually pack your dried fish in your carry-ons, the carry-ons will be opened at the security check and you don't want to risk it uh, being embarrassed at the counter and also you don't know if it will not stink. At your home country's airport, make sure to also be ready with your documents passport with cfo sticker visa plane ticket ds 2019 form birth certificates contact information about your employer and visa sponsor prepare to pay the travel tax per traveler current nbi clearance for other countries this is the criminal record clearance issued by your country if you're coming from a DEP at school, be ready with your clearance as well. And if you were a DOS scholar in college or graduate school, make sure to also have that clearance from the DOSC. So make sure you have these in your carry-on so you can easily access them. That's it for today. I hope this video is helpful to you. Thank you for watching and I will see you in my next one. Bye!